So folks, I'm fixing to get back out in the garage and get busy on that body work. Uh, the uh, weather today is supposed to get up to about 47 degrees. I sure wish this global warming would make up its mind. But anyway, uh, it was 80 degrees last time I was out there. Everything was working really well. This is borderline not being able to use body filler, but I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, I'm going to retry that uh, that mold that I used for the hood. I may even make a new one, a uh, little new and improved, but we'll see how that works. But uh, for today, that's what I'm going to concentrate on is the hood. And I may actually even start working on that uh, bed rail top. Um, and using that piece that I showed you in the last video. So I'm going to get out there and get busy and bring you along for the ride. looks like I, last time I worked on it I got it pretty straight the, the uh, line here isn't too bad and it has some excess on it so I'm going to try sanding it down first before making something new so uh, let me try that and see how it goes I got this hopefully I can control it a little bit better than I can that and uh, it's only 80 grit but we'll see how it works Being kind of a short fella doesn't help me at all. Makes it a little hard to get up in there. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the compressor and we'll do this one a little bit. I think it'll Work a little faster. The 80 grit's working pretty good today. It's not clogging up. So I guess when I was using it back there, the stuff was just not cured enough. So let me get that air compressor fired up.
bring you in and show you what I got so far. I'll try to get you where you can look down the line. Line looks pretty darn good. A little sharp, but straight. And you can see I got bare metal pretty much all the way around this, this repair, except for right up in here. That feels a little high right, right in there. So I'm trying to concentrate the board, leaving the front end of the board on the metal back here, and, or the back end of the board, and then the front end of the board up here to try to bring it down flat. Seems to be working. You can definitely see in here, this color here is the original repair I made. So is that there. So that's the reason why this thing was teetering uh, because it was, it was the original repair I made was too high. So once I get this down to where everything feels flat, on both sides it's got a little bit right in here too anywhere where you can see the paint that's that's where it's still a little high it's not not quite right there so once i get it down to where i have metal all the way around and it still feels even then i'll take a, a some sandpaper by hand and just kind of go along this ridge or rib, body line, whatever you want to call it, and uh, bring it down to where it's the same as this one here, this part here, and back here. So that it should be a, a unnoticeable repair. All right, air compressor's caught up. Let me try to do some more. Everything feels good until you get up here in this area. It almost feels like this area here is low. So from here, from about right here, all the way around to here, the top feels good. This body line that I was worried about feels really good. Just right in here, right in here. You see the primer is still there, it's still there. I don't know if it's low or if this is still high and I'm just not tall enough to get good pressure back in there. So what I'm gonna do is spray a little bit of uh, primer back on it, let it dry, and then sand it again and use it as a guide coat to let me know where I need to go and what I need to fill or not fill. So I'll bring you back after I do that. But you look at this while this is still wet. The line seems good. You can see lines here, all around here. Wish there was better light in here. But now you can see the line there. 
Back in the back, there's no line. They're back towards me. So, definitely needs more sanding. And like I said, we'll let this dry and then uh, continue on. That body line is pretty darn straight. Yeah, pretty straight. That's looking good. That's the part that I was most worried about. The other stuff, just I think maybe it might just be low out here still on both sides. But it could be that back there is high coming this way. So we'll, we'll let that dry and then I'll start sanding on that again. And uh, see what we have. All right, I, I just went across the uh, the whole back rail with this uh, re, uh, surface conditioning tool uh, because I don't like putting uh, body filler down on unsanded body filler, so it all had to be scuffed, and uh, it didn't change much as far as as how this tool will work. Some of the areas probably don't need much filler at all, actually but we'll find out still you still see a uh, an area there where there's nothing should be the same on both sides yep so but down here on the bottom this this part of the panel here where the paint is still all intact is, is relatively straight I don't have to worry about that so I'm going to put the the body filler right along in here and then uh, take this to smooth it out that's the plan anyway we'll see how it works I'll probably get body filler all over me but at least it should be pretty smooth and relatively close to where it needs to be so I'll put you on the tripod, mix up some some mud, and we'll we'll put it on the panel. Okay, I got got a bunch of mud mixed up here. Let's go ahead and try this. I'll start here closest to you so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna put a little bit all the way down. This is what happens when you work with your hands. Well, we're going to let this dry and see what it does. As you can see, it left, as it went by, it was, I don't know, creating air, creating air pockets or something underneath it. Uh, so it caused some problems, but uh, nothing that the uh, DA sander can't take care of. And it, and it did... You know, I'll definitely have to come back and fill some more, but it definitely uh, 
that one batch went the whole so it wasn't a large batch either went the whole way and left stuff like that it'll have to be filled but uh and then i i need to put some back here too because it, i didn't really concentrate much on on the back side of this panel this this part because that piece that i was using didn't cover the whole area so i was just concentrating on this this rounded portion right here so we'll see what it looks like after i do a little bit of sanding on it when it hardens and and we'll go from there the uh the front is dry looks pretty good like i said i'm still gonna have to sand some more up in here but uh I'm about to find something to stand on because I can't reach it up in there too good. But uh, we'll see what happens when I start sanding that guide coat off that black paint. See what it tells me that I have to do. All right, so I've been working on this this part of the hood. As you can see, that body line here is is pretty darn straight. Uh, but. I got what appears to be a high area here and a high area here. I think what that is is the brace underneath that this is sitting on. So this whole area, because it's black and the metal all around it is shiny, with the exception of right up in here, appears to be low. So there's a contour to the hood. I uh, got my straight edge sitting on that. As you can see, this damage, this part over here has never been damaged. Uh, got air there, and you got air down there. And it just kind of teeters, rocks back and forth. So the whole hood has a has a radius to it. You get it over here, and that that air gap is big down here, not so big down there. And relatively flat right here it doesn't rock at all if you if you punch it right here over here tap it right here and it rocks so that means the whole area same thing over on this side it's relatively flat right in there it doesn't teeter much at all move it over here and it does so this whole area is is flat where where it should be should have a radius to it i don't know that i can fix that <laughs> i mean that would go way out here it, it starts getting flat right in there that's where it starts getting flat over here it's not same with over here here's flat relatively in that area uh, you, there you go. You can see it now. Relatively flat in that area. Move it over here. And it's not. Hmm. I might think about this one for a little while too. And taking you back to the the rails, bed rails, because of the temperature out here today, this is taking longer to to set up again. I mixed it pretty warm, but. It's taking a while. Starting to break off with little pieces here. And, you know, breaking off. It's, it's past the, definitely past the, uh, the stage for um, the uh, cheese grater file, which I wasn't going to use on this at all because it would damage it more than it would help. But... It would definitely, the way it is right now, it would clog up the, the paper so bad it would be unbelievable. So, let me think about this hood a little bit and see what I can come up with. Alright, using that template I made the other day, if I put my fingers on here and do it back and forth like this, it's rock solid. If I go up here, it's rock solid. Go here, where the repair is. It rocks back and forth. Even though I've taken off a lot of material since I, I uh, put the repair on earlier with using this, uh, it's still this area out here 
is still all low. So that's going to require a lot bigger area than I than I initially thought. And then I'll have to sand in in several different directions at the same time in order to maintain the contour. Uh, <laughs> that's the only thing I can think to do. The, the hood is kind of flimsy anyway. It's, it's, like, it's, just, it's just such a big panel. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to think about it some more. Back in the old days, I know exactly how I would fix that. I'd put a hood scoop on it and cut that area out and stick a tunnel ram in it. Uh, not the option on this one. <laughs> All right, I put a new piece of 40 grit on the DA sander. And we're going to try to knock it down a little bit. Oh, there it is. That's what's got to come off. bring it back okay I've got it to the point where I think I can put the last coat of, of body filler on it there's still some waviness to it and there always probably will be because of the amount of work that was done underneath it I'm not a professional body guy by any means of the, any stretch of the imagination but I am very happy the way the the uh, the curve here turned out it feels real good there's, like I said, there's some low areas, like right in here, where the uh, thing left left uh, gouges, and it'll it'll require some spot filler, and I have a whole tube of that, so we should be good there. There's some areas where I not high areas where I knocked it down. It's going to require a little bit of more body filler. This here was two welds. That I didn't knock down far enough, but now they are. So I'm, I'll put a little bit more on those, uh, and then back in here. 
was all high. So I'll fill that a little bit. Got some place I gotta run to right now, and I'll be back here in a little while and and hopefully get this part of the panel, this part of the truck done tonight. At least down to 80 grit anyway. And then for a final paint and primer and stuff like that, we'll have to do some 220 or something like that, 320. But uh, I'm, I'm happy with the way it's turned out so far. All right, and bringing you back to this area here, uh, there were a bunch of high areas. I've gone along with the hammer and uh, knocked them all down along the top here. This area here had a few, uh, like right in here, right in there, but nothing to really really worry about so much it was pretty pretty good there's still one air, high area right here I do believe but it's gotten so cold now out here that I can't I can't do any more bondo tonight I uh, won't be able to do any tomorrow tomorrow's Easter Sunday so we've got uh, church and family things to do so I'll probably be back about here uh, Monday. I believe it's supposed to be a little warmer. And uh, so I'll do a couple of closing words and, and we'll call it a day. I don't know if you guys can see that black mark. I hope you can. That mark there and that mark there is the underside of the hood where the... Uh, the damage is now you should be able to see both of them i i hope um bring it out just a little bit now the only reason why i'm showing you this is i just learned a few minutes ago that this whole area this whole thing is loose it's, it's supposed to be it's got little things of body sealer type stuff that's been put on there but being as the truck is so old it's all loose so with that being said I may be able to actually get that down or and, and possibly cut this a little square out of here Still leaving the integrity of the rest of the of the uh, brace, but I might be able to get in there and actually try to work it a little bit with a with a, a something, a, <laughs> a screwdriver and a hammer or something. I don't have a body hammer anymore, but uh, maybe my welding hammer might be able to get up in there and do that. But uh, either way, that would saved me a little bit of time on uh trying to fill all that and and like i said the le the le least amount of of filler on the hood is, is to me the best because when the engine gets hot the hood gets hot uh, i've had problems in the past that the uh the bondo or body filler whatever you want to call it doesn't stay on the hood very well so I really don't like putting that on there. And the way it is now, I'm going to have to put a whole bunch on there, a whole bunch more. So I think I'm going to try to cut that out and hopefully not damage the hood at the same time. Uh, I'll save the piece and maybe later on I can find somebody that has a good MIG welder and just tack it back in place. But uh, I think that's the, the avenue I'm going to take. Uh, so, <laughs> if you'd like, give me some comments, let me know what you think. Okay, so as you just saw, I've come up with another avenue to try to get that, that hood done. Uh, don't know what you guys think about it, but uh, to me, the least amount of hood, uh, Bondo that I have on the hood uh, the better. So I'll, I'll work on that next time I'm out here. Uh, 
I'll probably use my little air cutoff tool that doesn't go through the metal quite as fast. I'll put a something in there to hold it, hold it away, so that I don't have to worry about hitting the, the hood. I'd really not. I'd really like to not scratch the hood up on on the underside there. Uh, but uh, cut that out and then try to hammer that stuff, that, that hood back up rather than trying to fill it. It, it just seems to make more sense. Uh, and so in order to do that, I'm going to have to go and take off everything that I've put on the hood. Uh, I'll have to, to grind that off with the uh, flap wheel or the surface, surface conditioning tool and uh, get it all clean that way uh, it'll be easier to work with and it'll just be metal instead of having to try to push against the, the bondo as well so with that thought in mind i'm going to close this video and uh, we'll work on that project again the next in the next video as well as finishing up that bed rail and uh, so those two things right now are my biggest my biggest issues and uh, we'll get those those done in the next video. Uh, again, thanks for coming along for the ride. I sure appreciate you guys and and uh, everybody that subscribed. I, I really appreciate you. Uh, we're we're getting close to 200 viewers. I know for for people like Derek over at Vice Grip Garage, that's that's a drop on a hot rock for him. He he might lose that many in a day. I don't know, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I appreciate every one of you guys. Uh, again, thanks for coming along for the ride, and see you in the next video. Bye.